Okay, so we are recording. Uh, my name is Michael Smith. I am the instructor of record for this class, and I'm actually a graduate of Southern New Hampshire in English. I have a, a master's in uh, in history, and I, I'm almost done with my PhD in history, but I enjoy writing and I enjoy teaching writing, and so those two things just kind of uh, merge in this class in a very particular way. Uh, how many of you enjoy writing? And you can be honest with me, uh, or how many of you struggle? So you can tell me where you come in on that spectrum. I definitely am not a fan of writing, but that's part of the reason I went back to school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to improve good. the ability to do it. Good, good. I love writing. I, I always do it in my free time. And I was considering when I decided on being a history major, I just went because I love history the most, but I was considering being an English literature major as well. Okay. My, I, I was don't mind writing. Okay, good. I was told once it wasn't the one thing I did, but the 15 things I dabble in. So I have a, a lot of interest. I was a pastor for 20 years and everything I've ever done had teaching involved. So teaching is my passion but I do enjoy writing. I've got a couple of book projects I'm working on that uh, are, are one of the, I really am trying to get off my plate quickly because the anniversary of the historical event is 1925. And then I'm doing a biography of the guy who invented the laser who happened to be from my hometown in Greenville, South Carolina. So I'm, I'm working on those. I uh, need more time. I need to teach less and write more, but uh, that's kind of the way it is. Uh, the one thing I would say to you as we get started is to realize the number of different kinds of writing that are out there. Uh, probably the biggest pushback I get in this class will be from English majors who don't realize that history writing is very different from English writing. Uh, in history, we it's almost like surgery. You know, you make the incision, you get you get in, do the job, get out as quickly as you can. You don't do a lot of uh, adjectives and things like that. It's a very concise form of writing. Andrews and anthropology is probably the same there. Uh, and we use a different set of tools for documenting our, our research. And it's all about the research. We're not usually, at least not at this level, we're not experts in what we're writing on. So our sources become our, our, uh, our, 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 our experts. I, I liken it almost to a court case. When you go into a courtroom, you have two sides. You have a prosecution and you have a defense. In the first part of the trial, both sides make an opening statement to the jury. This is where we're going. This is how we're going to get there. Think of that as your introduction to the paper. It's short. It should be probably no more than half a page for this, kind, this size paper that we're doing. And then each, each side takes a turn calling expert witnesses up to verify the evidence that they've found. And that's exactly what you're going to be doing with your sources. And then at the end, both have a closing statement, which is very much like your conclusion. So if you will think of it in terms of being a very legal kind of a proceeding when you write, I think that will help you in this class immensely. Uh, as far as the subject concerned, it, it is in some ways already determined for you. The, the seven uh, lens that we see in our uh, 1.3 this week, our, our journal and in the discussion, we're gonna use those to examine three different cultures that you're gonna pick. And that's the thing that you're doing in, one, in, in journal 1.3 is you are looking for three societies that started uh, we're, we're talking this week about the start of civilization. I don't know if you saw my note about the, uh, the reason we start with Sumer and Egypt and he, the Hebrews is because that's where writing started. There is a history before that that is not documented that, you know, it depends on how you take that. I mean, for religious people, there's a, the there's a Garden of Eden and the events of the Old Testament. They take that by faith. They can't necessarily say, well, that's history because it was written down long after the event. It was done by oral history, by word of mouth. And so they, they take it by faith or whatever. And then we start looking at documentation beginning with the Sumerians. 
So this is kind of where you're starting in your choice of, of uh, societies you're going to examine. And you're going to use those seven lens to talk about how they develop. Uh, keep in, the main thing to keep in mind is that you're going to need primary sources for those. And I find that most people really are confused about what primary, primary sources are. They are things written during the time you're investigating. So if you're talking about the Romans, you're going to want to look at original Roman writings or Greek writings, and you want to document those using Turabian uh, as your, and find at least one, so, one primary source for each of the three if you can. Uh, and that's going to be your biggest hurdle is to look for sources to do real research. And the other thing is, this is not a report. This is research. This means you've got multiple sources and they talk to each other. They may disagree. And that's a great thing in a research paper to be able to explain the disagreement or to look at it and realize. You realize if you, as a historian, and we're all historians since we're in this class, whether you're a history major or not. You can have seven historians walk out onto a battlefield, each one of them collecting evidence from the last battle, and they will go back to their typewriter or the computer, and they will write something totally different about the same battle. There will be certain things that are the same, but they all have a different lens on, and it's usually guided by their bias. So when you read history, don't be upset to realize that, hey, this guy doesn't agree with this guy. You're there again, you're looking through a different lens and a different understanding, or maybe they have a different theme or whatever. That's the way history kind of moves forward incrementally. We kind of crawl forward based on all these different perspectives that are examined by the historians and they argue against it or for it or whatever, bring new things to light. And so in the end, we get some kind of a consensus over what we are, what we're trying to talk about. Any, any comment about any of that or questions or is it, or am I, or am I preaching to the choir? So anybody have any idea yet on the societies you'd like to kind of look at for your paper? Are you guys asleep already? I think ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, and uh, ancient Greece. Okay, those those all have some really good materials, um, and and you'll as you get into that, even the development of language is so different. I love I love the Egyptians. That's my favorite. I had a class at Clemson years ago in undergrad. And they had a lady that came from Brandeis who was an expert in the field. And I swear, I think she probably lived in the pyramids, but she left me with a love for Egypt. I've never gotten over, especially hieroglyphics. And that language was, was dead to us for years until, until Napoleon captured Egypt. And when you talk about Egypt, all the different things like the environment, they're, they're so unique because they were bordered in the North on the Delta they're surrounded by deserts. And so the only, they were conquered a few times by minor groups, but they're very few times. And so they were only really conquered by Alexander the Great and by Napoleon. So there's a lot of great stuff in, with them, a lot of written records, you know, the Book of the Dead, all kind of things. Same thing with Sumer. There's a few, there are some, a few uh, original records there uh, with cuneiform and re realizing that they were the ones who started writing. And most of their stuff was uh, record keeping, and uh, but they did develop into some forms of literature. And of course, the Greeks are, are a wealth of information. So I think you'd find, uh, but be sure you find good primary sources and, and, and use them in your paper. Don't just put them at the end. You really need to cite in the paper information from every source that will be on the reference page. Does anybody have any questions about Turabian or anything else that, that you feel a little disconcerted about? Nope, not me personally. I'm pretty well versed in it. Good. So I have one quick question on the lens you're referring to. When you're referring to the economic lens, are you referring to economics in the sense of, you know, 
dealing with obsidian and actual prices or are you dealing with economics is how it's actually studied where it's the debate as to how you choose when resources are limited and well, how you allocate that in this case i don't know that you go quite that deep into actual economic <laughs> theory uh yeah i would i would encourage you to look at that being one of the reasons that they stopped being hunters and gatherers and started deciding to live in society is that uh they, they started trading you know of course but then they had also had to have surplus goods to trade which they didn't have as hunters and gatherers because they had no way to move it or store it or keep it so when they decided to settle down in one place and go to work and this this happens in different areas at approximately the same time which i think is fascinating because in the in the americas uh you have uh the native america the the mayans and the incas and the aztecs and many many more the mississippian culture they all do the same kinds of things they're building pyramids in america how do these people know this about each other right i mean that's always the thing that boggles my mind is how could you possibly know in mexico the same thing that's going on in egypt uh what's the connection and of course we do know now that the indians I, I try not to use that term native americans uh were cousins of the euro asians so they you know the the uh human genome project has pretty well proven that all people on the earth are related and that the native americans got here either over the bering strait which is probably what happened in the ice age and moved in and settled america and then got cut off so they would have had some prior knowledge of what was going on in the rest of the world, but it had faded and gone away with oral history and, of course, that kind of thing. I would stay with economics talking about general general things like that, how you know they began to grow crops and they began to have surpluses, which opened the door for trade, which opened the door for you know not everyone having to do hunting and gathering, so they could make things other people needed that they could trade. So. I would I would probably deal with it more in generalities like that than something, you know, maybe like economic theories, because that would have been non-existent. That's the one thing about history that you keep in mind uh, is that you cannot read back onto them ideas that weren't a part of their time. Does that make sense? No, I agree with you, especially in the early cultures you were talking about, but it starts becoming more interesting as you move later on in the timeline yeah, up into the 1400s, 1500s, then well, that stuff is starting to become a bigger deal. Even, even before that, I say with the Greeks and the he the Greeks and the Romans, um, I, I think I may, if you've read any of my stuff, I send you or responses, uh, the, the Romans, the, the, the Greeks were science people and not much technology. The, the Romans were technology people, but not a lot of science. Correct. And they invented concrete, which became such a huge, I mean, we have roads in Italy today that the Romans built that have never been repaired and we still use them. Uh, we have an aqueduct in France that is still carrying water into the cities that has never had to be repaired because they built things to last. Would to God we could send engineers over there and learn how to build a road, you know, back in history. Uh, we, <laughs> uh, we have potholes in North Carolina you could lose your car in. Uh, so those are the kind of things that as you move through, you'll find little bits and pieces. That's what makes history interesting is it's the story you don't see. And that's what I want you to think about as you write this paper, work on the little known facts. You know, like Paul Harvey he used to have a, a radio program for years that uh, was, uh, was called The Rest of the Story. He'd spend 20 minutes spinning this narrative like we're doing. And he'll say, now at 20 after he'd say, now I'll be back after the commercial with the rest of the story and when he came back he just knocked your socks off with something that you hadn't even haven't even talked about so let me take just a moment and go back and address a couple of questions in the chat box um christine um so Brittany says she tends to struggle so uh Brittany, please um lean on me for that i'm more than happy to meet with you and talk to you anytime you need that's true for all of you i can have one-on-one -on -one zoom on our, on, you know, I do that on my time because I really want you to do well and I want you to grow and, uh, you know, and do those things. Uh, Christine, with with the Turabian 
uh, formatting will will help you with that as well. Uh, you can go. You can Google anything online. How do you show? How do you cite a book in Turabian? It'll give you the exact format. Uh, if you will send me a note, I will send you one of my papers done in Turabian, so you can see what it looks like. And I'll be glad to help you with uh, get, getting up to date with that. Okay, is that fair enough? Um, you could uh, you could use the Celts uh, and find a couple of other groups. I mean, there are most of the writings you will find from them will be primary yet secondary. Does that make sense? Uh, would have been written by Roman priests, uh, like you know, in the seven eight hundreds. Uh, they wouldn't have been writing quite that early, probably, because they were still very much in, into uh, barbarism, I guess would be a better term. I don't know if you like movies or not. My favorite movie is Gladiator. Um, and the opening scene of that movie is probably worth the movie where you see something of the Roman technology. And if you haven't seen that, go back and look at it again in light of history and see how the Romans prevailed with their, their catapults and their, their, their weaponry. And that movie was fairly, fairly accurate with that. Uh, but the people that were fighting with the Germanic tribes, and that was the state they were in at whatever year that battle took place. So Europe is developing later and, and more slowly. Okay, Andrew. Um, so the Fertile Crescent, pretty clear example of culture. But yes, that's, that's really good. I sent you guys an article in the announcements today about something I thought was interesting in the Mayans, who was one of the ancient cultures in the Americas, collapsing, an ecological collapse, uh, whether that was something they dealt with in those days or not, and I believe it was. Uh, be sure you read that. I would love some responses. I really, I really value a give and take in, in this class. I want you to get jump in, get involved, respond. Don't sit in the corner and be quiet. That's not the way you learn a lot. And uh, you know, don't don't take my uh, passion for history to be negative. I sometimes I, I get all excited and jump in with both feet, and you know, will scare you to death. But I'm not being personal. Uh, I just want to I want to discuss things. I would love for you to be able to to wet your appetite and become real many historians, if you're, not, if you're not a history major, at least jump in because whatever field you're in, history is going to be such a major part of your life. Uh, I mean, if you look at this morning's newspaper, I could talk for five hours from this morning's newspaper on, about ancient history and where this came from. The, the battle in Ukraine, I mean, the war in Ukraine, the things going on in Israel, with the uh, with the uh, you know doing the peace treaties with the, the Arab countries and all this stuff that you're seeing in the newspaper uh, is just uh, amazing stuff. So, uh, any comments or questions? Yeah, the in same engine, good example. Roman technology, bridge building, aqueduct building, and the interesting thing is, I think, and I, I responded to one of the discussion questions along this line, it was meant for really not necessarily the people of the society so much as these things were meant for the military. Uh, the bridges and the roads were ways to move Roman troops. That was the first priority, but others benefited. Trade benefited, economics benefited, and uh, later in the New Testament era, the, the uh, Christianity, the new, re new religion was spread because of the Roman road, because of two things. Number one, because the Greeks under Alexander had spread the Greek language to the ends of the known world. So everybody was a Greek speaker and the, the initial Bible for the New Testament was written in Greek. So everybody could understand and the roads made possible travel, safe travel. Um, and yeah, the Audubon in Germany, of course, is, is excellent. I worked for BMW, by the way, for 10 years in the Greenville plant and, uh, I'm writing a book on them, on BMW and the Nazis, which I hope to get to before I die. I'm 65 and I'm gonna to live to be 100. So I've got 35 years to finish my writing projects. And so I'm, I'm hoping to get there. So there's a whole history around that that hasn't been uncovered. Uh, 
is uh, about the, the Nazis and Henry Ford, who was an anti-Semite, who would not allow Jews to work in his factory, yet he would hide Nazi war criminals and work them till they retired. He received the highest award from the Nazis that you could give to a civilian. So Tina, did you, uh, did you see my article on the Mayas that I sent today? That you, you like the Mayan culture? It's called Collapse, and it's about what we think happened to that ancient culture. But I would, I, I have some great articles uh, that I would love to share with you. They don't quite fit into our study, but uh, I have one called Is Google Making Us Stupid? Uh, the Day Our Children Disappear. A lot of great stuff along the lines of that, of that article. Okay, guys, any, anybody else have a question? This is your time. I don't mean to monopolize it. I don't know if you saw my writing document that I kind of sent out before class ever started. I've got another one that I'm probably going to send out tomorrow that's along the same lines. Just the, the things that you need to, to know. Uh, the 1.3 journal, you're just pretty much uh, giving us the three societies you want to look at. You're getting feedback from me. You always look for feedback on everything you do and try to incorporate it into your next assignment. There are, there are two milestone assignments and then the final paper. And in all of those, you'll get uh, you'll, you'll get feedback and a grade, of course, but the feedback will be the most important. What do you need to fix about this paper? If you want it, you can ask for it. I'll be glad to send you uh, one of my papers uh, if you want to see what a finished paper should look like. To me, that's always kind of helpful if, I, if I'm not familiar with it. Um, but feel free, feel free to ask me for what you need. That's the point I'm trying to get across. I would gladly meet with the, with the class anytime. I just, I haven't had a great, this is the best attendance I've ever had. Uh, I don't usually have good attendance with these and it's really difficult to plan to do it and nobody show up. So, but I'm more than happy. Please know that I'm more than happy to, to help you in any way that I can. Okay. So Tina, I take it from that, you might want to, your, your three cultures might be the Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Incas. Is that what you're thinking about? Uh, they're all right there together and uh, might be an interesting three to compare because the, the Aztecs were very, very uh, predominant when the Spaniards landed and uh, their culture was really quite advanced. Now you can discuss religion, in that area with the Aztecs because they practice human sacrifice, all kinds of things. I mean, that's just a, your, your biggest problem in some of these areas is going to be narrowing your focus and your writing because you can write whole books on this stuff. So you're taking the seven lens that we're looking at these cultures. You're going to talk about their religion, how that develops. You're talking about their technologies, how that develops. Um, Christine, yeah, I mean, Vikings would be an interesting cultural um, look and find some other, two other cultures to compare them with. And we've had some really great history documentaries done on the Vikings in recent years, and those are fairly accurate. Uh, let, me, let me also kind of talk to you about that as well. Uh, finding cultures, uh, you know, your resources. That's what I wanted to talk about. We really do in a, in a full-blown research paper, you have to be very careful about the kinds of sources because don't use Wikipedia, please. Uh, Wikipedia will kind of get you left out of the history world because of one thing. Wikipedia is a open source. So anybody with a log on can go in and change any article on there that they want to. That happened a few years ago when Sarah Palin was running for vice president with, uh, and she went to Baltimore and kind of slaughtered in the way she can, only she could do, uh, the story of Paul Revere. I mean, it looked nothing like the history. And one of her followers went online, rewrote the story and posted it and wiped out whatever was there. And so some poor kid in fourth grade writing on Paul Revere that read that probably thought her story was correct. And so that Wikipedia can have 
some good articles. Don't get me wrong. There are two ways you can use Wikipedia. Number one, you can go on and look at their sources. If they have a good article and it has sources, they are done. Their articles are done in Trabian if you want to see how it's done. Um, and you can also maybe get a, a, a scope of the outline that you need to deal with. So that will be helpful. Okay, guys, anything, okay, anything I've missed that you want to ask about that you, that's on your mind? I'll tell you one group that nobody ever talks about, and that's the Phoenicians. And the Phoenicians were the people who carried the, uh, what I would call the anglicized alphabet or the regular alphabet all over the known world and laid the foundation for the Romance languages that we use uh, that have the, all, all of us use the same alphabet, the Germans and the Portuguese and the Spanish. And I was in uh, Russia in 1990 under communism and I kept looking at their at their signs and it suddenly dawned on me, hey, these aren't, these are Cyrillic letters. So this is a Cyrillic alphabet, which is different from our own. And of course, then the Arabs have a different one again. So uh, how those develop is always fascinating. Yes, it's hard to learn too. <laughs> it's like, but, but you know, what was interesting, Andrew, is when I realized I knew a little bit of Greek, and once I knew, figured it out, then I could read a little bit more than I could looking at it through English eyes. Um, and you realize the English language is fairly new. It didn't start till about 11, 1100, 1150. So we're still new kids on the block historically and by language. So Andrews, is there anything that uh, I have missed that you think would be helpful to these guys since you do anthropology you probably have done this before or anyone else have a comment yeah the persians are good uh the uh, babylonians we, we don't think about them very often um, uh, I, I love the, you know, some of those things. Yes, there's a lot of, don't, don't ignore the Middle Eastern cultures, especially, you know, uh, of course, we always know the big, big stuff like Alexander the Great. And once he died, he got divided up, in, he divided the world up. Um, one of the interesting things about the Egyptians would be their, their treatment of women. They had uh, at least three pharaohs that were women. Uh, so that's really interesting. You don't see women appearing no, anywhere else. Um, yeah, Baghdad. Baghdad and Babylon are really kind of an interesting place. I mean, there was Saddam Hussein was trying to rebuild the Hanging Gardens of Babylon at one point during his tenure in Iraq, which is where Babylon was. Uh, you know, there's other cradles of civilization. I mean, it's the... the uh, Mesopotamia, there's the Indus River Valley. You can talk about India. Uh, there is the Yangtze River in China, uh, where you can talk about the Chinese. Uh, where else? Uh, but those are what were called the cradles of civilization. Yeah, the Persians were fascinating people with, with their, the, the one thing we miss in, in dealing with the Middle East is that they were the, go-to people for science and for astronomy for years and years. When the West in 476, when Rome fell and the West went into the dark ages and would be there until about 1200, it was the, it was the Arabs who took our, our materials, the, the Greek writings and the Roman stuff, all that stuff, and they translated it into Arabic and they, they preserved it for us. So when we came out of the dark ages, we literally went back to them to get our, our historical documentation back and translate it back into our languages so we would have it, but they preserved it for us. And that will continue up until 1918 with the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Empire. At 1918, when the Ottoman Empire fell, the, uh, many of the, the, the Arabs went back into this Muslim fundamentalism, not all of them, but many of them did at the same time 
Christianity and Judaism, all three, they all three, all the three monotheistic religions turned and went back into a religious fundamentalism. And we're still kind of seeing that today in America in this revival of, you know, with the Republican Party and Christian, Christian nationalism. Basically, I, I could talk for hours on that. That's my research area, but uh, this is not a surprise at all. Hey guys, anything else? Do you think meetings like this are helpful or no? Or am I wasting my time? I think it was helpful, clarified a little bit more where I was thinking. Okay. And for the lady who is thinking of going after the uh, or talking about the Vikings, I would suggest using the Saxons and the Normans to yes. compare. Very good. That's, that's a great. <laughs> they they form that evil little triangle in uh, that part of the world. <laughs> sure, and and I'm telling you, with the Romans, you know, when they went there and built Hadrian's Wall, they were trying to keep most of the Angles and the Saxons and the Jeets out. You know. Uh, and they were, remember, that was the barbarians. That's how the Ro the Roman map said barbarians are here, you know. Uh, so the, uh, it's, it's really interesting that we can, you know, put those three together. Uh, there, is a, there is a Roman Catholic writer of the Venerable Bede, was around seven, eight hundred. Uh, and I, I would think... Uh, what was St. Patrick? I'm not sure what years he was in Ireland, but it would have been very, very early. So there would be some documentation you might would look at there. Um, so, yeah. And, yeah, I think it's a great time to kind of add connections. Uh, do you, how often do you think a meeting like this would be, uh, would be helpful? We, I, we can talk what we, you know, the materials weekly or, or we can just keep it with the reading. We can do another one. Uh, before the first, uh, you know, the first big, you know, submission, if you want to. But I want to do it early enough to where it will do you some good too, as well. But I think I think it's very beneficial for us to make connections and understand what's going on. And okay, you like weekly? Anybody else like weekly? I'd be more than happy to give the time to this because I love it. Okay. All right. I mean, I can I can do weekly, but I don't know if I'm going to always be able to make it. My uh, work my work schedule is uh, hectic at best some weeks. I understand. <laughs> well, we can we can actually offer it, and then we can tape it, and then you can uh, I, back and, and that way. You I work can... in I work in the entertainment industry. There are, there's no such thing as weekends. <laughs> I, understand. I understand. It, it's every day of the week. <laughs> okay. Sure. So, so let me stop the recording.